am I? What do I do? Where do where do I go? There's nowhere to go. What, what's that? What? Hey, over here. Me? Down here. What? You can be on this little plant. Uh huh. Come check out this book. Don't you wanna check this out? Oh, huh. it opened up to this page, Claytonia. Wait a minute. I think that fairy was trying to tell me something. Hey, Nancy. Told me I could figure out how to identify plants by using this book. I'm imbued with the power of the fairies. I think I can I think I can figure this out. I think I just have to use this thing right here. Oh, it looks like things are paired up. There's a one and then a one prime. Oh, I think you have to decide, is this one more like what you're looking at? Or is this one more like what you're looking at? Let me read them through. Per, perennial. Flower stems from thick taprooted caudex, which is like a woody sort of uh, thickening of the stem right at the ground level or right below. How do I know this? The fairy must have told me. Or annual or perennial from rhizomes, caudex generally zero or short taproot zero or slender. Well, in order to figure that out, I'm gonna pull up a plant. Here's the base of the plant. That's not a thick caudex. Straight down taproot, not, a, not rhizomes. Came right up, it's not, it's all very fleshy. I'm gonna go with annual, that just grew just this year. It hasn't been living for multiple years. So, one prime. It looks like I get to now choose between four or four prime. Perennial. Rhizomes long, generally branched. I think we figured out it didn't have that. Annual. Petals more or less equal to or greater than sepals. Hmm. Oh yeah. Look at after it talked about the perennial stuff back there. On four, talked about petals much greater than sepals. I think we can figure that out. There's those petals. There are the sepals underneath. There they are. Looks like the petals are longer. Not, not way, way longer, but we can, we can check. Let's actually measure and find out. Just happened to have this handy ruler that was in the book. Looks like about three millimeters for the petals. about three millimeters for the sepals. They just start lower down, so they are about the same. Huh. Okay, so definitely going with four prime. Oh, then I move down here. Seven or seven prime. I'm making choices between couplets, between pairs. That's how this key works. Brax one per one to four flowers versus Bracts generally one, subtending or uh, underneath the lowest flower. What is a bract? Oh yeah, yeah, a leafy sort of appendage, leaf-like appendage. Here it is. There's one right there. It's sort of bitten off, but there's only one, and it's way at the bottom. That looks like seven prime. You could always check the next part. Petals one to eight millimeters versus petals 4 to 12 millimeters. We measured before that they're about three, so that fits with that. Cool, so I think we're choosing seven prime, and now we get to go down below to nine, and then nine prime is probably on the other page. Petals minute to greater than sepals, white or pinkish. Hey, Claytonia perfoliata. Claytonia perfoliata. Miner's lettuce. Oh, common. Vernally moist, often shady or disturbed sites. My house is definitely shady and disturbed. This is it, little fairy. I think I figured it out.
to this breath of fresh air with color and photos and design elements and bullet points. There are range maps, growth form illustrations, and a key that looks a little less intimidating. This one is set up with couplets listed right there next to each other. So say you have a dogwood specimen. Start with 1A and 1B. If 1B is your choice, go to 2. Looking at 2A and 2B, hey, it's 2A, Eastern Flowering Dogwood. All right, getting a little more bioregional. This book is from 1961, and I don't know if anyone uses it anymore, but how cool to have one for the Santa Cruz Mountains. The key in this one uses indentation to set off series of couplets that are not always directly stacked on one another. Like the Michigan tree key, this one has a go-to column to the right of the paired couplets. Whereas with this fairy tale Jepson manual, if your choice is one, then your options are all listed right below one, multiple couplets of choices often. And if your choice is one prime, your options are listed between here and the end of the key. Back to the candy key. Say you have a piece of saltwater taffy, but you don't know that because you're not from Nantucket. Start with 1A and B. It's chewy, so go to 2. 2A and 2B. It's wrapped, so go to 3. 3A and 3B. It's rounded, so go to 4. 4A and 4B. The wrapper is all white. Saltwater taffy. Check this out. You can graph this. Each couplet becomes a split. Okay, chewy, not hard versus hard. It's chewy. Not wrapped versus wrapped. It's wrapped. It's rounded. Wrapper's all white. Salt water taffy. All right, let's look at these cute little things and use them to make a dichotomous key. What's an obvious dichotomy here? Where to make a split? How about toys and office supplies? Let's chart it out with these groupings as our first split. The next split in the toys could be vehicles and people figures. The vehicles are both fire related, but one has hoses and one has flashing lights. We can ID them now. The people figures could split out lots of different ways, but let's go with hat, no hat, and there's the ID. Now the first split of the office supplies could be various things, but let's go with pointy ends, rounded ends. Rounded end is our paper clip. For pointy ends, you could measure their length. But let's go with color. Gold is little scissors, blue and silver, big scissors. Okay, we did it. Now let's take this chart and write it out as a dichotomous key. Let's start with our first split, 1A and 1B. Toys versus office supplies. Dum, 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 dum. We'll have this go to our second pair down here, 2A, 2B, and we'll leave this one blank for now because we don't really know how long it's gonna, how far the toy key is gonna go necessarily. Okay, so for toys, our next choice, people figures versus vehicles. So we will go to our next number choice, which will be a 3, 3A, 3B. Leave that one blank for now. So people figures, we could go to our next split. Um, no hat versus hat. So write that differently. Hat, no hat. And then we can do Lego, no hat, Playmobil. So those are done. Going back up to the vehicles now, we can make that into four. We have four A and four B. And now we look up here under our vehicles to our next split. Has hoses versus flashing lights on the roof. So do hoses, lights on roof. Brings us to fire truck, chief car. I before E, right? Anyway, okay, so that takes care of all of our toys. I'm gonna have to bring the key over this way. Um, now we can go back up here, since we got through the um, number four, we can go back up to office supplies and write five. So we have five A, five B. So back over here, our choices, we have pointy end, 
and rounded end. So for a rounded end, we can identify that right away as paper clip. So that is done. Over here, we have some more choices still. So we'll go to six, and we have six A and six B. So we have gold versus blue and silver. Leads us to big scissors, little scissors. So and there you have it in a list form. So first off, just start by writing, jotting down some characteristics of these different leaves that you see. Your species number one, we'll just call it one for now. This is the Pacific Madrone or Arbutus menziesii. So you can check out the margin of the leaf, the edges, check out the overall shape, look for texture, or if you can tell that this is sort of glossy and waxy, you can look at does the bottom of the leaf vary, are there any sorts of prominent veins, does it have a petiole, which is this leaf stem here. So I'll give you another a little bit, or pause it if you need to, and write down a few characteristics. We'll call this uh, species number two. This is a uh, tan oak or Nothalithocarpus densiflorus. Right away, you can see the margin of the leaf is pretty different on this one compared to the madrone. Look at the tips of each um, little tooth here, little spine tipped, little uh, kind of lobes in between the spines. Look at the prominent venation here, sort of parallel to each other veins, kind of like uh, uh, little tiny parking spaces. Has, also has a petiole, if you can tell, that's a little bit fuzzy. And uh, you can see from this side, different difference in coloration. All right, I kind of gave you uh, some specifics there on that one, but on the rest of them, I'll just show them to you slowly, flip them over, and let you write down whatever observations you can find yourself. Try to write down, you know, three to five different things that you notice about each of these leaves. Coast Redwood. Here's the Douglas fir. And last one right here. Knob cone pine. All right, I'm not sure how this will work, but we'll give it a shot. So here are your different species. Um, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Presumably you're able to write down some uh, identifying characteristics. And what you should do now is try to construct a key. You can make a graphical key first and then try to transform your graphical key into that uh, text format, the sort of the list 
where you have the couplets um, sort of stacked on top of each other going down the page. And after you make this dichotomous key, it should be possible for anybody to um, take one of these leaves and move through your key and identify um, what species it comes from.